Hello, in this OpenGL video we are going to cover how to draw a quad. A quad is anything that has four vertices and what we're going to be drawing is a square but you can easily change it to be drawing a rectangle or basically any other quad. Like I said, it's a shape that has four vertices. Before we actually start doing any code, let's just switch over to this drawing application so we can just show you how the coordinate system in OpenGL works. So what we've got is it ranges between negative 1 and negative 1 in the x-axis and negative 1 and neg uh, and negative 1 and 1 in the x y-axis. I think I said negative 1 and negative 1. I meant negative 1 and 1 in the x-axis. If I did, sorry about that. And this yellow line, though it's not touching what negative 1, 1, negative 1 and 1, it should be, but the yellow line is basically the entire screen what you see. Whether it's widescreen or not widescreen, this is the principle. So it doesn't matter whether our window is widescreen or not, This is, it is the same coordinate system. So for us to draw a square, we want to, well, do points anywhere on our screen and they need to be the same width and the same height. Just to go over this a bit more, this is the bottom left of the screen, this is the top right of the screen, I mean top left, this is the top right of the screen and the bottom right of the screen. So what we're going to actually do is just use the 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5 range for our square simply because we want our square to be in the center instead of filling the entire screen because otherwise we're just going to see a white white space we're not going to really see anything beyond that so we're going to have the top right corner at 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 we're going to have the top left corner at negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 we're going to have the bottom left corner and negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and we are going to have the bottom right corner at negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so those are the coordinates that we are going to use so first thing that we need to do in our code is actually create a float array which has the vertices so to do that, pretty simple stuff, float vertices equals, duh, 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 duh. in here, we're just going to put the coordinates that we just made from here. So let's do the top left corner first. So top left was, what was it, negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, so negative 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, and we're going to put 0, 0.0 for the z axis because we're not dealing in 3d at the moment you can actually omit this if you want to and just set the code according i mean set the code to only use x and y but we're going to put this in anyway and like i said this is the top left now we're going to do the top right which is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 0.0 top right now we're going to do bottom right, so 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.0, and this is bottom right. And now finally we're going to do bottom left, which is negative 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, 0 0.0, and this is bottom left. So now we have actually set up our array of vertices. Let's just Let's end it with a semicolon and now we can actually start drawing some OpenGL. First thing we need to do is GL enable client state and this takes a parameter of GL underscore vertex array. This just tells OpenGL that we're using a vertex array. And anything that you enable you have to disable it. So let's just do GL disable client state. And you just specify what you're disabling. So gl underscore vertex array. And inside here is where we're going to start drawing our shape. First of all, you need to create a pointer which points to our vertices array, which has all the vertexes for our quad. 
So in here, you do GL vertex pointer. The first parameter is the size, and the size is how many pieces of data each vertex has. The each vertex has three, which is X, Y, and Z. So we put the value three. Do you remember earlier on I said you could omit the Z value? If you did, you would need to change this to a two, but we're going to leave it as three. Now the type we are going to put GL underscore float and the reason for that is because we have a vertices array which is of type float next is stride this is going to be zero but what the stride means is is there a gap between vertices at the moment there isn't we have x y and z then we have the next vertex x y and z and so forth but you might have other pieces of information in there such as color therefore you would have a gap and that's what the stride would be but for this simple example, you just can put zero. And for the pointer, you simply put the array, which is vertices. And finally, do GL draw arrays, GL underscore quads. And the first parameter is what vertex you want to start at. I'm going to put zero because that is the vertex we want to start at. And the number of vertices. And I'm going to put for this four. So let's just click space, run this now, and see what happens. So there we go, we have a quad that has appeared on our screen. There is one problem. If you look at our coordinates that we've put in there, the gap, or the width and the height, is one. It's exactly one. But when we look at our so-called square, it does not look like a square. And the reason for that is, it's not a square and the main reason is if we just go back to here remember I said this is the screen coordinate system and it ranges between minus one and one minus one and one and I didn't make any mention to the screens pixels so even if let's say our screen width was 640 and our screen height was 640, it would still range between z minus 1 and 1 in the x-axis and minus 1 and 1 in the y-axis. If, let's say, our width was 1280 and our height was 720, so 720p, so it's no longer a square, it's wide screen, it would still range between minus 1 and 1 in the x-axis and minus 1 and 1 in the y-axis. These are called normalized coordinates. So if, let's say, we had the value of 0 0.5, this is essentially 75% of the way long. But if, let's say, we change this to 640 by 640, we get a perfect square. And you might be thinking, we can't practically just have a window that is a square, because most applications aren't like that. They're usually widescreen, and you're right, we can't. So we need to add a bit of extra OpenGL code on top of our quad drawing code. And you might be wondering why do we not put this in the setup video? Simply because it helps illustrate what this code does with something like drawing a quad, or more specifically, a square. So the first thing that we need to do is set the viewport but actually before we do that we're going to abstract these values out into hash defines so that way they're constant and we can easily change them because we will need to refer to the width and the height quite a few times so for this I'm going to put screen underscore width change this put this at 640 put hash define screen underscore height put this as 480 replace this with screen underscore height replace this with screen underscore width and now what we're going to do is do gl viewport and now this takes a x and y value which is 0 0.0 f 0 0.0 f and the width and the height of our screen so we put screen underscore width and screen underscore height this specifies the part of the window that we want OpenGL to draw to in pixels basically it converts it from normalized okay what we had here to normalized 
I mean, from normalized to device pixels to screen window pixels. So we have so you, instead of it ranging between minus one and one, it ranges between zero and for the screen height is forty, for the screen width is six forty. Next, we're going to set the matrix mode to so GL matrix mode. I'm going to set this to GL underscore projection. And this projection matrix defines the properties of the camera. Basically, it's what you view the world from. This is not a physical camera. If you see illustrations online of projections in OpenGL or DirectX or anything else, you might see a camera on those illustrations. The camera technically doesn't exist. It's not a 3D model of a camera that you see inside it. It's just essentially what we've called it. It's a camera. And here you typically set stuff like zoom factor, aspect ratio, and near and far clipping planes. So the next thing that we need to do is do GL load identity. GL load identity replaces the current matrix with the identity matrix and starts us afresh basically because matrix transformations such as GL author, which we'll be doing in a moment, GL rotate and other transformation matrices accumulate together and we don't want them to start messing things up. In this video, we could actually leave GL load identity out, but every time you change GL matrix mode, it's best if you reset the GL load identity because it basically puts it puts us at zero, zero, zero. The next line is GL ortho, and this takes a left value, and the left value is going to be zero. The right value is going to be screen width. The bottom value is going to be zero and the top value is going to be screen height now we just set the near and far clipping planes I'm going to put zero and one we're not going to really talk about the near and far clipping planes too much simply because that's going to be part of a separate video but essentially all you need to know, uh, uh, sorry all you need to know is anything nearer to us or the camera essentially to us than the near clipping plane isn't drawn and anything further than the far clipping plane isn't drawn that's essentially the core principle so what we've set here is our new coordinate system so what we're saying is it ranges between zero and the screen width which is 640 and zero and 480 so instead of it ranging, ranging between minus one and one we would actually start here at zero and end it at 640, start it at 0 and end it at 480 so that way we can easily draw a square and that GL viewport was just converting it to pixels the next thing we're going to do is GL matrix mode GL underscore model view basically GL model view is the default matrix mode and this defines how your objects are transformed such as translation which you can think of as moving rotation and scaling in your world so what we're doing here is sort of just resetting it back to its default state and as we would or as we did before when we set the matrix mode we need to call GL load identity semicolon so if we were to run this now Let's see what happens. <coughs> Sorry about that, just a little ill at the moment. You might be thinking, nothing really is getting drawn. Yeah, that's fine. Nothing is getting drawn, and the reason for that is we need to update these coordinates because these are really small now. Remember, it doesn't range between negative one and one. It ranges between zero and screen width and zero and screen height. Also, we are going to put this at, what should we put it at? I'm going to put all the negative values, were, which were the left side and the bottom side, as zero. So that way, it starts in the bottom left, our square does. I'm going to put 
all the positive values as 300 so the square is going to be 300 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall so if we run this now we now have a square that is 300 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall rerun that okay that's fine that reset was just because I was moving and sort of resizing the window and that's going to be covered in a separate video I'm just wondering why is this window not the right size aka that's why I did screen height first so I'm going to change this to screen width screen height rerun it and there we go we have a 640 by 480 pixel window and this is 300 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall let's say we were to set this to 1280 by 720 which is 16 by 9 which is widescreen though our window is bigger we still have a square that is 300 pixels wide and 300 pixels tall if for example you really liked the old system of having normalized coordinates so minus one one minus one and one you can easily change these values to reflect that you would just change the left value to minus one change the right value to one change the bottom value to minus one and change the top value to one so if we run this do all that a second First of all, let's just change our screen width and height. 640 by 480. Now let's have a look what's going on. Minus 1, 1, minus 1, and 1. Go to GL. Also, obviously, because we've changed the GL viewport, we will need to re update that. But I would recommend not going back to that system because essentially you're going back, and we want the new system of having coordinates so I'm just gonna update this to 640 480 rerun this there you go we've got a square in the bottom left and if for example we change all the y values I mean all the zero values to 50 50 and 50 mm -hmm. we now have a square that isn't oh this keeps modifying because I'm moving the window again we'll cover that in a separate video so what we have is a square that is in the bottom left but not in not quite flush with the bottom left and that's because where were we where were we because we set the values as 50 50 50 and 50 instead of 0 0 0 0 0 so there we have it that is the OpenGL coordinate system that it uses by default. Now it actually uses screen width and screen height. We've shown you how to actually draw an array of quads. You can easily make this into a I mean a rectangle. We actually recommend that you turn it into a rectangle because it will really help you learn if you do change it up a little bit so that is it if you have any questions feel free to post them on our education platform sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash questions.php there'll be a link in the description there'll be another link in the description to the source code from this video if you like the video please give it a thumbs up comment and hit that subscribe button as it really does help and as usual thank you for watching and i hope you have a great day